fellow crafters, I'm Karen, and in this video I'll be showing you how to make this wishing well out of almost exclusively popsicle sticks, hot glue, and paint. When I originally decided I wanted to make a wishing well, I was going to do your natural, realistic looking wishing well with sort of your stones and grass around it, but then I decided that I would try something a little bit more interesting and see if I could communicate the idea of the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow within the concept of a wishing well. So the materials and tools that you'll need for this are up on the screen, and these revolve around building our wishing well and making it those colors. So you'll need a mirror, you'll need a lot of popsicle sticks, and for this I'm going to be primarily using the small popsicle sticks, and then you'll need a lot of paint. If you don't have the variety of paint colors that I do, and I'm going to be using two shades of paint for each color, then you could quickly drop your colors down to just your standard rainbow colors and end up with just six paints that you'll need in addition to the gold. But in my case, I'm going to be trying to do a little bit fancier of a rainbow that goes in some shading from darker to lighter shades of each color, so I'm going to be using a lot of different colors of paint. I already laid out my popsicle sticks once and figured out that I can roughly fit a hexagon within the confines of my mirror. So I'm going to be aiming for that in my final product. And from there I stacked up just a stack of popsicle sticks and learned that about 36 of them makes a reasonable height to correspond to the diameter of my wishing well. So if you use a mirror that's a different size or popsicle sticks that are a different size, you'll want to go through this stage and just figure out exactly how high you want it to be for your diameter so that you don't end up with something that looks disproportionate. With an anticipated height of 36 popsicle sticks and 12 colors to work with, I'm going to need three layers of each color. Now each layer is only going to be three popsicle sticks even though we're doing a hexagon, which is just because the corners are going to overlap. So the bottom layer will be three and then we'll do the opposite three to get the second layer and then our third layer is back in the same position as the first. So I'm going to go ahead and paint nine popsicle sticks for each color and then the gold liner will actually be a separate piece later on so we don't have to worry about that painting at this point in the process. Now that we're done painting, we can start assembling the bottom half of the wishing well. And remember that we're aiming for a hexagon here. So there are a couple ways that you can approach getting that bottom level right. And those first two layers, it really is, three popsicle sticks on each layer, really define the hexagon for the rest of the shape. So you want to get that first one right. You can use a protractor to do that. I have one here that goes um, full circle. And you can also just try to eyeball it. The key in that is just making sure that opposite sides, all three of them, look parallel to each other. If you've picked a mirror that's really well sized to your popsicle sticks, you may be able to line it up with the outside edge or get it equidistant from the outside edge, each of your corners, and that can help as well. So with my first piece set here, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing, and again, being really careful on the first couple of layers, after that, we'll have a pretty solid structure to work with as we work our way upward. That process was pretty straightforward. The one thing I would say to keep in mind as you're doing it is to use your fingers and your eyeballs together to make sure that you're staying very straightly vertical here. Um, you don't want to accidentally make it smaller at the top or even larger at the top. Smaller I think is probably more likely, but if you can use your fingers to feel when you're placing it that it's flush with the ones below it, then your popsicle stick should be roughly in the right place and you should get fairly straight walls. The next step is to make a gold liner for the inside, and for this I'm going to be using an applesauce box. It's that nice thin cardboard that you can bend and manipulate really well. 
Um, so the first thing we'll need to do is to cut it to the right size. And since I don't have a continuous piece um, without having some of the corners of the box in it, I might do it in two pieces, two halves of the wishing well. Or I might just try to see if I can use those corners to my advantage. I have to measure and see how it looks first. So I'm going to cut at least one, maybe two pieces to fill and line the inside of this and then we can go on to painting it. I have my pieces cut to size so now I'm going to go ahead and paint them. And since the inside is brown, I won't need to do anything other than paint it gold. But the outside, because it has my nice applesauce pattern on it, um, I'm going to go ahead and paint that black first and then put a layer of gold on. And I'm using black just because I think it'll cover more easily than the gold. The gold could take as many as maybe four or five coats to cover this completely. And that's not worth the time or the paint. So I'm going to put down a layer of black. And even if the black does kind of put a darker shade on the gold in the end. I think that's alright because you'll only ever see that through the slats of the bottom of the wishing well here. So um, it would be dark because it's in shadow anyways. So that's my plan and we'll do that before we glue anything together just because I think it'll be easier to manipulate with it in two halves. I'm done painting the gold and I opted on the outside to do slightly less than a solid gold so you can see a little bit of the black through and I did that on purpose. Um, I just like the way it looked so I went with it. And now we have to attach this to the inside which is going to be a little bit tricky. My plan is basically to run a bead of hot glue down the corners and then uh, pop those two center corners into place, let them dry, and then deal with um, gluing the other edges. So I want to remember that my little tabs that I I'm using to connect the two pieces, so one tab on each piece, those need to be on the outside so that in the end you don't see um, those tabs on the inside. You will be able to see them on the outside, but that's okay. So on to the hot gluing. So that process turned out to be way more taxing than I expected it to be, but it is done. And um, I think the issue may have been just that my glue was drying before I got it fully in place, um, or it wasn't sticking especially well to the painted sticks or sometimes to the painted cardboard, which makes sense. So um, I think it'll stay in place right now, especially because of those tabs, because the glue sticks better between the two pieces of cardboard. So I've got a nice golden hexagon here, and I tried to trim a little bit up here, but it didn't trim very well. Um, it's hard to get my scissors in where the scissors have any strength. So I'm going to leave that for now and see if I decide I want to sort of hide it later as opposed to trying to trim it off. So that is our gold liner complete. It's back to the popsicle sticks now because it's time to build the roof of the wishing well. And I've got my miniature ones that I used to build the bottom half as well as some of the full length ones because I think I'll need some of both. The first decision I'll have to make here is whether I want it to be horizontal uh, full size sticks for the roof or if I want to do vertical miniature sticks. And I think I have to kind of get an idea of whether the miniature ones will make for a long enough roof. Because if they'll be too small, then I'll have to use the bigger ones. 
think they're going to be too small. Because that doesn't look like enough of, an, of a peak. The other thing you could do is extend it like this. I think with a wide enough angle, the larger popsicle sticks are actually the right length to give just the slightest overhang, which is good. So I think I'm going to use the larger popsicle sticks as supports side to side and also as the, for lack of a better word, shingles. So we need to make some basically pallets out of these larger popsicle sticks. It looks like 14 makes a good width so that there's a very slight overhang on both sides, but this is slightly wider than a single popsicle stick by, of course, two. So I'm going to have to use um, multiple of the longer popsicle sticks on the inside, um, or potentially even multiple of the little ones, to provide enough of a support to keep them in place. So I'm going to glue two of these together, and then we'll add some more detail. Alright, so I now have two sides of my roof, and they will look approximately like this, over the top. So next we need to connect these to each other and put some posts to hold them in place inside the well. So for making this into an actual roof form, we need triangles basically that can sit on the inside of the top here and hold them at the right angle. So I need to figure out what the right angle is and then build some triangles. I've got my triangles assembled and cut out, and I did one further step, which was to cut down just a little bit of my upper popsicle sticks that were the supports on the roof. And if you can avoid doing this when you make it yourself, please do, because that was a real pain. Um, just place your popsicle sticks in a little bit further. You do want to make sure that you have enough holding this last popsicle stick on that we don't have to worry about it popping off, but the triangles will also help with that in the end. So the next step is to glue these together, and then we can move forward with the painting. We now have a roof, and I was able to use some of my narrow popsicle sticks that weren't formed quite right as a good way to make this look more even from the end, so the, the properly wide stick overlaps the narrow one, so it works out that they're roughly the same on either side. So that was fortunate. And I reinforced the inside a little bit, got our triangles glued in, so the roof is pretty sturdy now. And we can go ahead and paint it. Given that the bottom of the wishing well is colored in the rainbow, you could really use just about any color you wanted to for the roof. I'm going to aim for a bit more of a neutral and use some dark brown paint to, to paint the top of it and then use a little bit of my country tan, which is sort of a grayish brown, uh, with my fan brush, and just feather a little bit of color variation on top of it. And then the inside and the side triangles are going to be white, um, and I'm just doing that to add a little bit of brightness so that um, when we're aiming for this sort of like bright gold on the inside, that it's added to by the white as opposed to dulled out by another color.
We now need to create some posts to connect the roof to the bottom half of the wishing well. And for this I'm going to be using layers of popsicle sticks where some of the middle layers are going to be missing in certain places to leave an area for this quarter inch dowel to go through which will be the rod that the bucket rope will turn around. So um, we'll be building a little bit of a crank on the end of this and that'll allow it to turn and um, sit within the posts so it stays connected. So the first thing that we want to do here is figure out exactly how tall we want our posts to be. I've worked out that I want the posts to be approximately three of my mini popsicle sticks tall, which is just under seven and three quarters inches. And I want to place the crank about two inches below the top of the post. So I've marked my internal popsicle sticks that I'm going to be needing to cut down at an inch and five eighths, which will leave me a, a little three eighths sort of area for the crank to be in. And I'm going to go ahead and cut those popsicle sticks and assemble using those longer ones along with a bunch of the mini ones so that I have two full posts. Here I have my two completed posts. I did leave a little bit of a gap at the bottom, just I didn't feel there was a need to fill it since it won't be visible in the end anyways. And um, I did on this one have to trim down just a little bit of this popsicle stick here because it turned out that the mini popsicle sticks I used in the middle here were thicker than the regular size popsicle sticks I used on the other side. So I needed to balance that out a little, but that looks fine now. So before we paint this, I'm gonna finish up the, um, the rod and crank part so that everything can be painted at the same time. And I haven't exactly worked out all the details here, but I need to work out how long or how wide it needs to be, um, cut it down to length, and then figure out how much of a crank I can build on here, given that I don't want it to hit the roof of the wishing well. I now have a completed little crank for our bucket, which we'll make later. And these, all these pieces that we just made are going to be painted white, so I'm going to go ahead and do that before we head on to the bucket. These pieces need a little more time to dry, so I'm going to set them aside and move on to making a bucket. I've decided that it's probably easiest to form the bucket around an existing structure. So I'm starting with a small cup, and mine is plastic because that's all I have, but if you do have a choice, I would probably go with paper because it's less likely to melt with the hot glue gun. So the first thing to do is to figure out if we can get away with not trimming the popsicle sticks. So I'm going to try um, putting some of these around where the bottoms are tight, but the tops are at a slight angle. And I'm going to figure out how much of an angle is needed to get away with using this cup and the sticks as is. So I'm going to hold them in place with a rubber band, get a feel for it, and then decide based on that whether it's going to need to be trimmed or not. With 14 mini popsicle sticks around this, I've gone the full way around. It's not the most perfect bucket in the world, but it's a very simple bucket, and I'm leaning towards keeping this simple um, rather than complicated and more precise. So I'm going to stick with this, and I'm probably not even going to finish the bottom, although I may glue some foam or felt on the bottom to give it a little bit of a uh, softer surface for hitting on the mirror. 
So now that these are in place roughly, I'm going to go back through with glue and try to get them in place exactly where I want. And then we can add that bottom piece and paint the whole thing gold. We'll also need to add a handle of some sort. So I will likely punch a hole through the plastic because it's probably the easiest way to put it in. And it will also probably be made of rope because that is, again, the easier solution. I will say too that if you want to make it look fancier, um, you would just need to make your popsicle sticks less rectangular and more triangular. So you'd have to shave them into sort of a pointy shape, put all the, the points down, and then probably use more of them because the, the 14 wouldn't fit fully around the top. I made a couple changes as I went, one of which was that I decided to use wire instead of string for the handle, so that's some 16 gauge wire. Um, and I didn't poke it through the sides, I ended up just gluing it in place so I wouldn't have to fuss with it. And I put these foam strips around the outside, um, they would be the equivalent of the metal bands that would hold the um, wood pieces in place. So mine are of course craft foam. And I put the piece in the bottom as expected, although I did find that when I put the glue directly on the plastic that it did melt through in the bottom. Um, so I just tried to smooth it over a little and it won't be any issue there. So now I can go ahead and paint this bucket gold and then we'll be able to assemble everything. With all of our pieces painted and complete, it's time to start assembly. So for this I'm going to start by attaching our posts to the bottom half of the wishing well, remembering to put this um, set of holes at the top so that our little rod and crank can go into it later. And then once I have these pieces in, I can attach the roof to the top, put in the rod, attach the bucket to it using some hemp jewelry cord, you could use any type of string or rope at this point that's small enough to look proportionate to your wishing well. And then I'll attach that all to my mirror and then finally add some moss as a final touch. I'm done attaching the posts but I want to do one more thing before I go on to attaching the roof and that is that this post over here um, it's the one that I assembled with the narrower popsicle sticks and had to shave down the one popsicle stick for it to go together. And that tiny bit of difference is just enough to make it hard for the rod to go in. It goes in, um, and the paint probably doesn't help that I've got a couple layers of paint on all sides. But I'm just going to take a little bit of a file in there and not worry so much about the paint, but just get it so it's able to spin more freely. It isn't perfect, but it does spin better than it did before, so I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, I don't want to take too much off because it is, after all, just a decoration and it doesn't need to function perfectly. So I'm going to put a little bead of glue around this side just to make sure that in the end it doesn't ever come out. Um, it's not too much of a risk because there's going to be a string tied around the middle to hold the bucket in place, but it's just a precaution. And then after that we can put the roof on.
I want to pause here for a minute before I put the moss in just to show you where I'm at. So I have everything glued together. I put some rope around the handle of the bucket um, to sort of create more of a handle. Um, and then I wrapped some around the rod up here. I got my roof glued on nice and tightly as well as the base glued to the mirror. Um, used a lot of glue here because I didn't think it would stick especially well to the mirror. It doesn't seem to be um, having any issues now. You could always re-glue it if there were issues later. So uh, my little bucket does crank, which is satisfying. Obviously it doesn't go very far. But the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of moss. So the goals here are to cover the mirror on the outside and to cover the little bits of that gold liner that came through. So it's just going to hopefully make it look a little bit more natural, like it's sitting in a, a grassy or mossy environment. And that will be the rest of the work. So after that, we're done. One thing I would recommend when you're putting on the moss is to put some that crawl up the edges and, uh, and put some up here on the posts as well. It just helps it look a little bit more natural. I'm not sure how natural it is for moss to actually grow that way, but to have some sort of plant life growing up it makes more sense than just having it stay on exclusively the ground. Thanks for supporting Tickled Fancy Crafting by watching this video. This content is available on YouTube and Rumble, so click the like or rumble button to let me know that you enjoyed the content, and subscribe to see new Tickled Fancy Crafting videos in your feed. If you'd like to be informed directly about the content, ring the notification bell on YouTube or adjust your notification settings on Rumble. Comment with crafts that you would like to see in the future, and remember, you can make this.